Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You know, many individuals and companies alike still find themselves picking up the pieces after the economic downturn of 2008. In fact, some of the nation's largest companies found themselves in a position where they had to be bailed out uh, by our government. Although this brought temporary relief, we still haven't addressed the problem. You see, until the masses really recognize the need to increase their personal value and skill sets, we're still going to have a problem and everything else will really be a band-aid effect. Uh, if you think about something like manufacturing and look at the decline over the last four or five decades, the, the statistics really are staggering. Today we're going to be talking with an organization who's really leading when it comes to helping thousands uh, increase their personal value and really attain more relief and more wealth uh, for their families. We're going to be speaking with Chantal Cooley, who's the vice president and co-founder of Columbia Southern University. Chantal's in the house. Amazing lady. Uh, we also have our dear friend Margot Bush will be co-hosting with us. Margot. If you're 35 to 40 years old and you find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to do, but you know you need to be doing something different, stick around. We may have the answer. We'll be right back. Come experience Nolan's. Savor award-winning steaks, Greek-style cuisine, fresh local seafood, and an extensive choice of wines. Whether you'd like to reserve the large private dining room, enjoy a meal on an outdoor deck, or rock the night away in our lounge, Nolan's now celebrating 25 years of exceeding your expectations for casual fine dining, live entertainment, and dancing nightly. When visiting Gulf Shores, Alabama, make sure to visit the Gulf Coast Zoo, home of the little zoo that could from Animal Planet. Get up close in our petting zoo. Enjoy our unique animal encounters. More than 300 monkeys, bears, reptiles, big cats, parrots, and more call a Gulf Coast home. Come on, go wild at the Alabama Gulf Coast Zoo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm here with uh, my dear friend, Margo Bush. Margo, how are you? I'm doing great. I brought you a gift uh, before we bring our you guests did? out. I did. You sound shocked like I never give you gifts. Come on. <laughs> well. So we ran across a company. Uh, it's called uh, Mamma Mia, and it's extra virgin olive oil. And w according to her, first press is the big thing. That we're going to talk to somebody that actually knows about right. it. So I've been eating this every week. And, um, and, and believe it or not, I've actually used it a few times on my face because I've read a couple of magazines, I won't tell you which ones, that say that it's one of the healthiest things that you can do for your skin. So uh, I, I actually have some on right now. Yeah, but, he, uh, no. and you look good. <laughs> That's something else I won't comment on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I want you to try this. And I, as soon as I had it, I said I have to have it on the show. I thought you said to that give was you some. Mine. No, I'm sorry. You know how it is. I always... Outrank. And um, so I wanted to, uh, to bring out our dear friend now. And I have a very special guest that's coming out that you actually met. Mm -hmm. uh, so come on out now. I have a surprise for you. Hey, how, how are you doing? doing? Good. <laughs> I'm going to hit you. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing it's fine. It's so good to doing? see you. I love this whole international thing where you kiss on the cheek. I love it. Now, I want to just take a couple of minutes before we bring out the guests and talk a little bit about this. First of all, what is extra virgin uh, olive oil? Because you have virgin olive oil is what I've always been raised, but now we have like extra virgin. Well, extra virgin olive oil is the first press. Basically, you know, olive oil is the juice of the olive. When you press it the first time, that is the juice that comes out and is called extra virgin olive oil. Virgin olive oil is the second, the third, and the fourth press. I got you. So there's really a reduction of quality. After that, they're just milking it, saying, get a little more out. Exactly. But the first press is kind of the cream of the crop. Is the best. Okay. And tell us a little bit about the company, Mamma Mia. 
Well, Mamma Mia really uh, was founded in 1935 mm -hmm. by uh, Grandpa. His name is Vincenzo Biondo. And you know, he, he had a vision, and his vision was to bring the extra virgin olive oil of the little town Santa Ninfa to the world. Right. And um, he was able to plant that vision in uh, Gaspare, which is his son-in-law, and, and later on his uh, grandchild, Vito. And uh, they worked you know, on it, and they expanded their industry from Santa Ninfa, which is a little town in the Valley of Bellici, to Sicily, then from Sicily to Italy, then from Italy to Canada. And actually, this is the bottle that is being sold in Canada. And now we're coming to USA with our new bottle, which is Mamma Mia. Wow. I feel like I'm on the Godfather right now. <laughs> like, I knew a guy that was in business in the olive oil business years ago. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I love everything about this. But can you take over? So, and I noticed one of these on here was organic. That's right. Our new, our extra virgin olive oil has always been organic, but probably this is the first time that we went ahead and got the certification because many people are looking for the organic certification yeah, right. and you can see it is right there, USDA. But our extra virgin olive oil is more than organic. I don't know if you noticed that we have three more certifications on the top and they're really important. This one is the DOP certification, which basically means that this product is grown, pressed, and bottled in Italy. Many companies only bottle in Italy, and their product actually is grown and pressed in a different country. Right, right. Okay, and then the other certification is the kosher certification, and this is very important, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because it means that this olive oil is fit for human consumption when it came out of the press. I see. 50% of the extra virgin olive oil produced in the Mediterranean area is not fit for mm -hmm. human consumption. And though it's first cold pressed, it must go through chemical and physical filtering to eliminate uh, flavor defects and other defects. When I've been doing a lot of research online, they say that even just like a shot glass of, of really extra virgin olive oil a day helps cleanse your gallbladder and all kinds of other health benefits as well. Uh, let me ask you quickly, uh, Vettina, how did you get started in the olive oil business? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was really coincidence. I'm gonna be honest with you. My dad and Gaspari had been friends since infancy, and they were next door neighbors. And then this last time when we went to Italy, we just happened to meet, we talk, we kind of, you know, we just click. Yeah, sure. So we decided that it was a good time to bring this extra virgin olive oil to the USA market. So the, the neighbor probably offered your dad a, an offer he couldn't refuse and That's they just right. got into the business <laughs> together. I get it. I Believe me, I've seen it. And uh, if somebody wants, I know I've, I've, had, I've eaten a lot of bread and olive oil for many years, but I have to tell you, as soon as I you know, took a bite of this, it, there's a huge difference in exactly. quality. And again, the health benefits. I know a lot of us are trying to be healthy. If somebody wants more information, where can they go? They can go to our website, www.mamamiausa.com. Ma <laughs> That's right, Mamma Mia, because it's a very good extra virgin olive oil. I mean, um, it's excellent. So you go there, and you can check our list of uh, local stores. And if we're not locally located, just go ahead and place your order online. And can you please give me the little bottle? The trout, this is like a travel size. Yeah, this is a travel size, and That's I'm gonna great. tell you what it is. That's it's great. a sampling size. A lot of people, when they go to our website and they see a bottle that is $30, they don't wanna buy it. They go like, how can I be sure this is a good olive oil? So we come up with this 100 milliliter bottle. It's only $10, <laughs> includes shipping, and that gives oh, you a chance to great. taste this extra virgin olive oil before you buy it. Yeah. So I encourage everybody just to do that. Go to our website, www.mamamiausa.com. I love how you say that. Well, listen, uh, Vettina, please come back. And if I have you back, will you bring some more? I uh, will. Course? There you have it. Vettina, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming on. Please Thank come back. Thank you. We'll be right back.
Estate today offers incredible opportunities, low prices and extremely low interest rates. Hi, I'm Amy Norris from Amy Sells the Beach. Right now, there are opportunities in all areas. Our team can help you put your money to work finding your dream or investment property. And if you're looking to sell, no one can give you better exposure to buyers and make your property stand out. Experience matters when looking for opportunity. I'm Amy Norris. See why we're number one at amysellsbeach.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited about our guest tonight, Chantel Cooley. Give her a warm welcome, everybody. Hi. Hi. You know, I learned that. <laughs> I learned that kiss thing from, uh, from the, who we just had on. I don't know if you've tried any of that olive oil, but if you haven't, no, I haven't. it's a must. I'm excited about that. Well, I'm excited about having you on the show, and... Um, <clears throat> You know, I, recently I went and kind of took the tour of uh, Columbia Southern University, and I'm going to give you my take in a minute uh, because there were several things that when I went home, I, I really took a lot out of that. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to, I'm not going to say I was more impressed than I thought I was, but I, I didn't know really what to expect. It was set up uh, by a mutual friend, and um, you know, I hear things all the time of like, go over here, check this out. These are real thinkers. And I have to say, when I went there, I was totally blown away. Uh, but before we get into it, I want to hear a little bit about how you guys got started. Okay. Well, you know, I was raised in an entrepreneur type family. Yeah. My dad, he would do so well in many things, but then we would fall as high as we went, we'd go that low. Oh, yeah. And I grew up in that atmosphere. Great parents, had a brother. So it's just me and my brother. And so we lived this life of up and down. And my dad was just always, you know, such a motivator growing up. And one day, we, he said, he came from the barn. He'd been thinking, meditating. And he said, we're going to start a university. Right. And we went, OK. And we thought, well, you know, Dad always, he, he always blew things out of the water. You know, he didn't halfway do anything. So we thought, okay. It was all or nothing. Yes. You're gonna... all, literally <laughs> cleaned out the ditches. I mean, yeah. as, as, as we grew up, every ditch was cleaned out. We yeah. just followed him and supported him. So it's not like we're going to provide education and help you. We're starting a whole university. Definitely. And, uh, <laughs> and I know that, um, you know, many entrepreneurs, they have uh, their parents were entrepreneurs and their parents, and sometimes there's family money to where starting out is a little easier. But I know that uh, you had said at one point that you guys would uh, save up all week or all month and say, we're going to go have pizza for $17 at the local Pizza Hut or whatever. Right. Uh, but talk a little bit about starting out. Uh, I know for most entrepreneurs, there's some real struggle. Oh, yes. I mean, one day we were like, we finally got enough money to uh, go to Pizza Hut. And the whole family walks out, dad has the keys, and there is no car. It was repossessed probably an hour before. And that happened over and over. Many times we didn't have uh, groceries in the house, and a church group would come bring us some groceries and eight bags of groceries right there at the doorstep. And just things like that. But, you know, we kept persevering. Yeah. We didn't give up. I mean, normal. normally you would probably say, you know what, I can't, I can't even can't make it. Can't do this anymore. anymore. Right. Yeah. But uh, we picked ourselves up and move forward and we stayed in so many rental houses and my mom was wonderful it, we made the house look better than it did when we moved in and everything we did we did with excellence whether we had any money or not right. we just persevered and we were determined to do something and this last time my dad said we're gonna make it this time we're gonna make it with this university this is it I can remember him telling my mother that and so we did. And we did. Well, and you know, one thing I think that you did have in your corner, so to speak, is so many times, whether people have financial resources or not, the families are really the ones that are the biggest skeptics sometimes of saying, get real, that's never going to happen. Who starts a university? Come on, you need to go get a real job. But although you didn't have monetary means or really even uh, the traditional form of education, I know your dad was a very aggressive self-educator and uh, said, you know what, uh, we can do it. And really, in that way, the family support was there. They said, we can do whatever we put our mind to type, type oh, yeah. motto. I mean, we didn't have anybody else but each other. And uh, my mom was a huge support to my dad. And me and my brother just went behind her and, and him and pushed through. Right. And one of the keys to his success was he surrounded himself with people who knew more than he did. 
right. and which kind of propelled everything to move forward. Right. I was told that many years ago by a very successful person. He, he kind of scolded me and he says, you know what your, your problem is, is in your circles, you're always the smartest guy in the room. And he says, that's not a compliment. That means your circle sucks. <laughs> right. You need a, so you need to, so from that point on, it was always my mission to like, I got to constantly be the dumbest guy in the room. I got to find those, trying to keep elevating the room to where, you know, you really, it benefits you to do more right. uh, listening than talking. And uh, I have to say, you know, when I went to the university, uh, I was really taken back because you had told me that your father was an avid uh, Zig Ziglar uh, oh, follower, right. uh, anything he can get his hands on. And, yeah. and when I went in, uh, all over the walls, it's, it's sayings from Zig Ziglar and uh, Dale Carnegie and people like Napoleon Hill, and it's just these great things. And you don't really think about uh, that entrepreneurial sp spirit when you think of traditional education. Many times uh, people that are you know, in the education world, so to speak, have a uh, kind of this box of rules of saying, here's the way life is, and they don't think very broad, but that's not what you guys do uh, at all. No, we, we, have, we want to bring value <coughs> to staff and our students, and so those quotes on the wall, it's just that atmosphere of entrepreneurship, really. It's like dream, and when you do dream, dream big. Go for it. Get educated. That's what you need to be success, uh, a success in your field. Yeah, right. And so we constantly have that atmosphere going on in the university. And it's just electric, uh, pretty much, in our university. When we get calls in from students, uh, we fire them up. They say, no, I don't know if I can, I can do this. I've got work and life and family. Well, we just, we attack them really and say, you know what, you can do this. Remember your goals. You needed to get your degree so you could be promoted. And that whole atmosphere constantly surrounds our staff and faculty. And really, we could say that that almost, that, that uh, motto, so to speak, really was your marketing uh, starting out. Right. We didn't have a lot of money at <laughs> all to market. So I, I can remember we were at a meeting. It was just a small meeting with a family. I said, you know what? We have hearts, and we can put care into action, and that's worth a lot of money, and that will change people's lives. And so we started training our staff and employees. It's like incredible customer service. I mean, let's be real, and let's, let's know their first, middle, and last name. If we have 100 calls that day, the 100th call is as if you took the first call. Let's be real and change people's lives. Wow. Uh, I know that uh, in the country, you guys are, what is it, the top 10? We're ranked uh, in the top 10 in all military branches. Right. So we have over half our students are military. I see. And then the, what would you say the average age of, of your students are? It's about 35 years old and up. Mm -hmm. Majority of uh, students come back. Maybe they went to, uh, right out of high school, they went to college, maybe had to quit due to work and life, sure. go work for the family business. We hear that a lot. And so now they've got to come back because they need that degree so they can get that promotion. Right. And what I really like about, you guys have really created like not only a vision, but there's like a, when you walk through the door, there's like a culture, you know, of, of this family thing. And everybody really, like you said, it's, you know, they're, first name, last name, middle name of all the students. There's just some real personal care. And there's kind of a buzz uh, when you go in. But um, you know, what I like about what you're doing is when you're young, 19, 20 years old, it's easier to go out and take risks and move away from your parents and go to college and you know, take those risks that, that many do. But when you're 35 years old and maybe life hasn't worked out, or as you said, they've started school and due to financial things, they've had to quit. It can be a real scary time for people. You know, they might think I'm in this full-time job and I'm not happy and I know it's dead end and I'm really just kind of existing right now instead of living. But at the same time, I have a mortgage. Maybe I got some kids. I have a wife, whatever the situation is. So when you find yourself in that situation, it's, it's not like being 19. And so really, there's a hand-holding with you guys where you're saying, don't worry, we'll work around your schedule We'll take it as fast as you want to take it or as slow. And whatever life you're dealing with right now or whatever circumstances you've created for yourself, we'll work around that to be able to help you get more value and uh, have a little bit more comfort. Right, right. Our uh, faculty and staff are incredible. Yeah. And they help you fit education into your life. Right. And uh, they're highly motivated. We have this saying that um, go have a cup of coffee with your students today. And really what that saying is take time, sit down, and enjoy your student. Find out who they are. So we really get involved with our yeah. students. And uh, we have over 30,000 students now 
and uh, we're able to change that many lives because we know how to work around their schedule and we know you've got soccer practice, moms going sure. to get kids after school, whatever You're not another is. number in the system of right. like, hey, we got your tuition. Right. And we, one of the things my dad always wanted to do is keep the tuition low. That way people, it, it's not hard on them to enroll and get themselves educated. Right. And, you know, I'll tell you something that really struck me was there's so many people that don't know what their vision is. You ask them, what do you want to do or what's your vision or what's your passion? You know, I haven't thought about that in years. I actually don't know. And from what I understand, you'll even get them on the phone and help them figure out a passion or a vision. Well, what do you like to do? And by the time that there's that mutual a conversation where by the time that you hang up, they know exactly where they're going and there's like a big weight uh, kind of lifted off of them. Right, right. We're, we want to, we want to figure out what they're, the, what they want to do in their life. Yeah. And if they want to stay in that same field, we help them figure out where they need to go and move forward. Sure. And that's not only, we, we do that with our students, but we do it with our staff too. We help them find value in themselves and figure out where they're going in life. So we don't want to just hire a bunch of people and you just yeah. work. We want to help you become who you're supposed to be, too. So we right. do that in-house and, and outside for our yes, for our students. Well, and, you know, I'll tell you that uh, when I was there, I was impressed with all of the staff. But I noticed there was a whole department that just was for writing curriculum. And I've written a lot of curriculum over the years for different uh, corporations and schools and things and that's not an easy thing to do and especially that was unaccredited education that I was writing mm -hmm. so doing what you're doing I can imagine is is very difficult how, how did you start in that I mean did you guys sit down and say okay I guess we got to start writing a curriculum is that kind of how it started yeah it did and of course you get faculty and you have to line it with their accreditation right and, and then you know we want to make the the curriculum where it's it's um it's obtainable, yeah. you know, and because you're, you're trying to fit all this into your life. You're tired when you get home, but we've got it where you can learn a lot and you can use some of your past, you know, a training that will help you right. at times. And um, we keep the curriculum where it's exciting, fun. We, we're going to have webinars, including our curriculum, wow. a lot of interaction, and which makes it more engaging for our right. students. Well, and I think that um, there's even been situations where maybe something was unaccredited and then you guys fought tooth and nail to be able to get certain uh, education or pieces accredited. Yes, right, right. we did. Um, with, uh, we're really big in the fire industry. We have associate in fire science and bachelor in fire science. We're doing some other things too in that area and um, our, our degree programs are, are well accepted throughout the fire industry now. Right. And from what I understand you have roughly, is it 24 or 25 different degrees? Right, uh, but it's another, can... uh, I think it's like 39, including our concentration. Oh, I see. And you, pr I presume, represent all 50 states? We do. And then other countries, are you into that yet? Right, or? right. We, we have students all across the nation, many who are uh, in Iran and Iraq and uh, Afghanistan. Wow. We, we work with them, and they'll call in on their time schedule, and we'll sit down and we'll give them whatever they need at that time. Yeah. Well, and again, the biggest thing that's right, there's such a sincere personal interest in, uh, you know, every student that you guys take in. And I was really taken aback. To me, it kind of seems like you had, like, the great Zig Ziglar and, and Tommy Hopkins and Dale Carnegie and all these great leaders over the last few decades. If they got together and says, you know what, we need to start a university, that's what I felt like I walked into. And uh, I've speak, I, I speak at a lot of universities, and sometimes it seems like the faculty have so many handcuffs and shackles that even if they want to really help the student and have the student's best interests in mind, mm -hmm. sometimes they're not allowed to. And that promotes other people saying, well, why do all this? Because I'm not going to be able to do what I want anyways. But you guys are really out of the box. You're saying if there's a, will, if there's a way to help a student, we're going to do our best to do everything possible from our side. Uh, to right. be able to make their lives better. Oh my gosh, I mean, we have so many students and testimonies come back to us that where they didn't think they could get their degree, right. they didn't feel like they were confident enough in their self, they yeah. felt like a zero. And we came in like a flood, we have great faculty that took care of them, yeah. and just took care of them, you know, didn't just say, uh, no, that's wrong. They'll actually take time and say, okay, let me help you write your paper. And that's where I think we make a difference. 
and it's just incredible and I can't take all the credit because we're huge team players sure. with all our faculty and staff that help us I mean we are we're, we're driving this big ship forward yeah. and we just make sure we're casting the vision constantly which is to improve and change lives in our students through education that's what we do together. Well, and I know that it's it's family owned. All weekend I stayed at the beach. There was a, a hotel that was very gracious to us, or a resort, and they said that we're a five star boutique hotel. And well, that told me everything. You know, we try to uphold the, the level of the five star, but we have this boutique feel. And that's kind of what I see with you guys is, you know, the education, the level of education is like the top tens, but at the same time, there's this family feel, and it really is family. I mean, your brothers. The president right. Uh, right now, and your vice president. You have uh, everybody's there. I know your husband even works there, and he's got his right. thing. And everybody mutually respects each other. Not everybody can do that, but um, you guys are certainly doing it well. Let's talk real brief about the book. I know that you have a, a really highly anticipated book coming out, uh, and the title is. It's a dream big and push through. Dream big and push through, and I, that's so fitting because so many times when we have a great vision, we know there's a period there where you're going to get hit with a lot of resistance and a lot of, you're going to get knocked down. So once you have that great vision and you start on that journey, when that resistance comes, you have to just keep pushing forward as you and your family have. And um, when the book is out, please come back on the show. I, I, you guys have your first sale uh, right here. <laughs> hey, I would love to. And I'd love to, to, to um, help out in any way I could. I noticed when I was there, uh, there's a whole facility for speaking and uh, I know that we have on this show interviewed great people like Brian Tracy. I think in a couple of weeks I'm interviewing uh, Les Brown and many of the great, uh, you know, m motivators uh, out there today. But um, I'd love to g grab a few friends and come out and help in any way we can. We certainly believe in your vision. Oh, we would so. love to have you. If, we, if anybody wants uh, more information of how they can get involved or maybe they've said, you know, I want to... I want to do it. I'm tired of the wheel. I want to make something in my life, and it's not too late. How can we get more information? It's uh, columbiasouthern.edu, and they can go online and see our website. Okay. Well, we appreciate that. Okay. Please come back. Thank You've been you. an excellent guest. Uh, Chantel Cooley, everybody. <laughs> the beautiful. And uh, I want to give a special thanks to Margot Bush as well. Uh, for our co-host, and also uh, Vatina for that lovely olive oil that we had. Uh, guys, we're out of time. That's our show. Don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody. Yeah.